Hey guys, today we are talking about gut health. And my name is Lindsay Mitchell with Vital Side. And with us, we have Jonathan Parr of Parr PT here in Austin. And so I'm so excited to kind of get going and talking about gut health. It's such a hot topic. And I think my goal today is to let people know, you know, oftentimes we feel symptoms of bloating, of food sensitivities, um, or, or even like hormonal dysregulation that affects our gut. And I think a goal of mine today is to kind of let people know that it's not always a structural issue in the gut. And it's not always because of the food you're eating why these symptoms occur. Oftentimes, it's this dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. So I think that's really important to point out. And Jonathan, why don't you kind of give us some more information on how our brain actually communicates with our gut? Yeah, so I mean, I think the most common uh, part of, of this whole GI system, everyone's familiar with like the, the vagus nerve and how that affects yeah. all the important functions of the gut, but there's a lesser known system called the enteric system, which is actually a branch of the autonomic system. And it's referred to as a second brain because it can actually work independently from the brain and the spinal cord. Um, so that, that shows how much power it has. And it actually has, I think almost five times the amount of neurons in that system in the gut more than what the spinal cord has. So we know that it's a really big role in assisting a lot of these, the GI function as a whole in, in, in combination with the, the vagus nerve. But it does rely heavily on the innervation of the autonomic system though. So anything that happens from a parasympathetic or sympathetic standpoint is going to affect the system. And understanding that if there are any sort of GI issues, um, it may actually be related to the dysregulation of these sympathetic and parasympathetic response that's causing some basically some faulty information to go into the gut. And so as a whole, the, the whole circle is not working correctly. So by managing one of them, it does send the right information to that system as a way for it to function properly. Um, and, you know, a lot of this even goes from a physical standpoint when we're looking at how to I guess facilitate these the, the parasympathetic and sympathetic response. Uh, we know that in the neck and the in the sacrum area we have some parasympathetic fibers, and along the thoracic and upper lumbar we have the uh, sympathetic. So even from a PT standpoint, we have to be able to know that and understand. Okay, if I'm trying to get these systems to work with someone who has a GI issue, I have to make sure that I'm targeting certain areas in spinal cord as a way to help regulate that in conjunction to what we would do from, you know, uh, neuroplasticity wise uh, of regulating these two systems. Yeah, so I love that. And I love how we can use, you know, movement or even, you know, shifts in our posture and these types of things and even brain retraining exercises. So even sitting down and doing that breathing exercise we did last week or deep breathing, you know, stimulating that vagus nerve, these types of things that can actually make a shift to our autonomic nervous system. We don't have to go anywhere for it. I mean, we can actually learn these things on our own, which I think is really cool. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that we do on a PT side too is that, you know, you mentioned the breathing. We do a lot of diaphragm breathing um, just to help stimulate the gut and in, in conjunction to some, maybe some soft tissue work that we do that um, is just good for just providing uh, information to the gut as a whole. So, you know, one of the things that we do here, um, it's, it's part one of a, a, a bigger series that we do for gut health, but uh, we end up, if you want to just kind of sit back to where you can see your stomach, if you're sitting down, imagine your belly button being here, we're just going to do 20 kind of light strokes. It doesn't have to be very hard. Uh, I wouldn't go past the medium pressure, but enough to where you can get 20 strokes clockwise, 20 strokes counterclockwise. And you'll find even in cases if you're having bloating and some of these issues that you may feel that gurgling or you may feel almost like a relief of pressure in the stomach as a way to help begin stimulating that system to work properly. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's typically what we do to start off. It's a good starter. And yeah. um, you know, there's more stuff if you have more questions on it. There's a longer series of things that you would do for it, but it's definitely something that you can do as a starter kit for home. 
Very cool. I love that. It feels good too. Yeah, it does. It's, it <laughs> does relieve a lot of that pressure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I think if in, in this kind of scenario, if you do have questions uh, moving forward, we would love to dive more in depth with this. If you leave any comments, uh, we'd be happy to, you know, kind of intervene again and, and go a little deeper into how these systems work together. And you can reach us at Lindsay's uh, My Vital Side. And then uh, for me at RPT Austin, we'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, thank you again for joining. Awesome. Bye, guys.